You might already be familiar with Payday 2's extended storyline. It took me over four hours to tell just a condensed version, turning Payday from a low-key heisting game into a Lovecraftian horror starring Giancarlo Esposito. But of course, this evolution didn't happen overnight. It was driven by an alternate reality game, or ARG, that was in the works for over five years, known only as The Secret. And today, I'm going to take you back in time to 2013 to review the entirety of Payday 2's greatest ever secret, with every clue, discovery, and rumour between then and November 2018 revealed in full. This is how the secret was solved. But first, if you're someone with creative aspirations in the gaming world, have I got a video sponsor for you. I personally have a game developer's drive, but none of the coding talent to back it up, which is why programs like Billbox are game changers for me. Billbox is an easy to use game development software tool that's actually been used to create several top 100 charting app store titles. With it, anyone can build, test and even publish their own games across all mobile genres with real potential to monetize successful creations. After installing, you'll have access to the Game Wizard, an easy to use introduction with which you can create your first game. From there, you can look to expand your horizons in either the 2D or 3D game space using preset templates and asset libraries ready to edit for your own unique gameplay experience. Even more advanced users might prefer starting from scratch though, leveraging the Buildbox shop to import free or premium assets and UI elements. If any of this has sparked your desire to get game building, check out either Buildbox Classic for easy to make 2D games or Buildbox 3 for the complete 2D and 3D experience. If you're like me and not quite ready to share your creations with the world, both of these can be used entirely free of charge, but there are also plus and pro subscription plans of Billbox for those of you ready to publish your games to the App Store and start making money. Head on down to the link in the description and see how Billbox can kickstart your budding development passions. Back when Payday 2 first released in August 2013, those who bought the Career Criminal Edition were also given access to a PDF document known as the Guide of Bane. This both served as an awesome 2000s era manual, with the game's mechanics and characters introduced in an immersive format, as well as a presumed clue for some larger secret. You see, just months earlier, in late 2012, the community had already solved one elaborate puzzle, activating Overdrill within Payday the Heist and laying the groundwork for yet another cryptic in-game event to come. With this in mind, upon seeing the developer's reference Borwin, a name which had featured prominently in the Heise ARG and mentioned an even greater secret existing, it was no surprise that just about everyone was on the lookout for clues to unlock another huge easter egg immediately. The obvious starting point was the guide itself. Within this document, Eagle Eye players set their sights on the tarot card style artwork which introduced the different chapters of the guide. The first was styled after the Resurrection of Christ, a painting which could be found within day one of Rats, but didn't seem to lead anywhere in particular, and the clues didn't really get any better from there. The Jester and Balloon's prevailing theory was that the secret was hidden within Release Payday's most mysterious heist, Big Oil, predicated entirely on the existence of this mushroom patch. The Alchemist image was also seen as some tenuous link to Rats, with the meth cocking assumed to be alchemy of sorts. Whilst this image would become very relevant later into the secret's lifespan, with alchemy seemingly the heart of the science behind its conclusion, in my opinion the community was grasping at straws, which was fair enough, because with hindsight on our side we can confirm the secret simply wasn't implemented at this point. Even so, the most convincing theory that I can remember from the time involved the strategies of a successful heist panel, with many pointing out how it could be Firestarter related due to the loot burning within the mound. This led to the popularisation of the Undervolt theory, with some spreading rumours that, similar to the Overdrill easter egg, it was possible to access an additional secret vault on Firestarter by performing some seriously elaborate steps. Whilst this was miles from the truth, this specific image was probably the most prevalent throughout the early days of the search for the secret. It came up once again with the release of Big Bank, where some might say the secret storyline really begins. I'm almost positive that the original secret team had greater plans for Big Bank early on, as the Guide of Bane character is overtly referenced in a mural on the roof of the lobby. Scarface Mansion also contains a statue in the courtyard strongly resembling this character and scene. Honestly, I have no idea what these were intended to mean and I'm pretty disappointed they end up being red herrings, even if that wasn't Overkill's original intention. It wouldn't actually be until the final stages of The Secret, five years on, that these images would become relevant once again. In the meantime, once Heist Contracted by the Dentist began to release, secret related information began to be drip fed. I believe many of these early discoveries were actually repurposed into the eventual real secret and at the time of release weren't part of any clear plan, but that didn't stop the community during those periods from digging far deeper than you'd expect. 
noting the unique benevolent bank loot boxes and engraved vault door. The name here is Red Apate, the Greek goddess of deceit, who was perceived by some as an initial warning not to trust Esposito's dentist, a guy known for playing impressive villains. The diamond was the next heist which had explicit ties to the secret, and probably informed the direction the eventually fully formed secret would take. The trailer contained important hints towards the nature of the dentist, and set the groundwork for the historical scope Payday's eventual lore would cover. The heist itself made a number of references to the star system of Algol, related to demons and the Gorgon Medusa. Godly and celestial imagery was very prevalent within the McKendrick Museum, with Egyptian, Sumerian and Greek pantheons first being explored on this heist. Of course, this meant nothing tangible yet, but the Ancient Mysteries exhibit and of course the diamond itself would be exceptionally relevant in discovering the true nature of the secret in the end. Golden Grin was the final dentist heist, and whilst it wasn't as interesting for secret hunters looking for subtle clues, it did introduce the dentist's loot, which would later be discovered to be one of the catalysts in unlocking the secret. It also left the dentist's story tantalisingly unsolved and set up for a massive payoff several years down the line. Whilst every heist that launched from then on drew some attention from Secret Hunters, the further we got from Payday 2's initial release, the more interest waned. Events such as Crimefest 2015 did its very best to remind us of something Cagliostro related bubbling in the background, but the less remembered about that one, the better. Souza's Mansion really was the last time that element of the community was drawn into a search, until it became impossible to ignore that a tangible secret worth hunting was finally in the works. That real secret as we know it was formed entirely around an overkill employee known as Wordsmith. Any previous lead or solution was window dressing for the puzzles in the months to come, and with the advent of the Reservoir Dogs heist, everything was about to change. This was the point where the secret was truly integrated into the storyline, with out of game puzzles needing to be solved to explain the in heist occurrences. Case in point, Bane's abduction by the Kataru was foreshadowed by an email within Payday's official database, the FBI files. Previously, the internal memos section of this site had been used to tease update content and add some personality to the recently introduced antagonist, Commissioner Garrett. Narrative points such as Bodhi's entrance to the gang and Locke's seeming betrayal in Alaska had also been worked into the site, but never had we witnessed anything as cryptic as the email titled Anuit Queptis, immediately bringing attention back to the all-seeing eye. Two days before the new heist launched, a Japanese address, Budesage Niwa Kino Koete, which translates to Hanging Gardens at Beyond Yesterday, sent a message stating, He has plundered your seas, ravaged your coasts, burnt your towns, and destroyed the lives of your people. Mr. Garrett, what is stopping your nemesis worth to you? Evidently, this was set up to foreshadow the narrative events of Bane's abduction and further Kataru blackmail. But even without that context, the secret seekers, as I'll dub them from here on in, were able to ascertain some sort of Yakuza connection from the Japanese email address, and a Sumerian angle from the Hanging Gardens, likely referencing the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Two days later, they were able to go one step further, cracking the very first coded clue. Attached to another Beyond Yesterday email, a cuneiform paragraph set the tone for what the community could expect from Wordsmith's ARG. This was an easy solve, as cuneiform is a well-understood ancient Middle Eastern written language, the first known to historically exist, confirming the Sumerian link that the community had previously assumed. Once translated, it read, From the hill to the path of the river, to the crossing of the honoured dead at rest, you will find a place of reckoning. A mystery clue at the time, but in hindsight likely a huge hint towards the story's culmination at the White House. Brooklyn Bank came next in the storyline, with the crew looking to fight back and take a step towards saving Bane and solving the mystery behind his disappearance. Once again, another email provided the secret seekers with a cryptic clue to accompany the heist. This one came from nmakar at beyondyesterday.com, and was sent to Commissioner Garrett via Mayor McKendrick. Emmakar was an ancient Sumerian ruler, solidifying that prior link, whilst the message itself was once again in cuneiform, reading, The Watcher has fallen, his end will be delivered, when translated. Whilst the language used wasn't entirely clear, this was the first time a Watcher had been alluded to, and it wasn't a huge reach for the Seekers to assume this message was referring to Bane, confirming that this Beyond Yesterday group were now the main antagonists of the story. Overlaying this text was the mysterious red diagram, the most cryptic clue so far. After a fair bit of sleuthing, it became clear that this was a mapping diagram of the streets around Capitol Hill, likely linked to the prior email and the eventual culmination of the story. The Brooklyn Bank heist itself also provided an early key to the secret, although the seekers wouldn't know it at the time. The medallion the Payday Gang steal from under the vault of the bank was called the Medallion of Perseids, 
Not only did it feature a fleur-de-lis, seen as a symbol of the secret ever since Payday the Heist, it also had more cuneiform etched onto the rim. This translated to, for the Watcher of the Star, the second mention of watches. What wasn't well understood by the Seekers at the time was the relevance of the medallion's name. The Perseids is one of the most major meteor showers annually, originating out of the Perseus constellation. Within said constellation is the three-star system known as Algol, which if you remember was heavily referenced in the diamond. Without getting too far ahead of myself, just know that the possibility this medallion's gemstone originated from that star system is pivotal to its place within the secret. A month after the Brooklyn heist on January the 19th, 2018, we received our first set of secret-related updates independent of an in-game heist release. This one was an internal FBI email updating Garrett on the forensics developments from their investigation into the hit on Bane's safe house. Attached was a photograph of a drawing, likely in Bane's possession prior to his abduction. At a glance, the community drew parallels to the picture of the alchemist from the Guide of Bane, as well as the man watching the fall of the meteor in the trailer for the diamond. Upon further inspection, it was the Hebrew text which provided the Seekers with the real clues they were looking for. Nebuchadnezzar was the man depicted in the sketch, historically great king of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. On his forehead was the term Watcher, the third time an individual had been described as such in this ARG. And finally, in faded text upon his chest was the phrase Nephilim, or Giant. Whilst not immediately relevant to the ARG itself, this was a huge lore revelation, properly introducing the Watchers and Nephilim, key players in the overarching narrative of powerful aliens and their relevance within modern religious history. Under a month later, the Secret Seekers would have their hands full with their first interactive puzzle. The Madutu Seals edition confirmed that there was a purpose to solving these riddles, as it was itself a decoder. You see, the seal itself was very much a red herring. Although it was interesting from a lore perspective, alluding to alchemical symbols and more cuneiform reading, the kings of tomorrow bound by fortune and glory for the watchers of yesterday, in actuality, this wasn't the riddle. Madutu is Arcadian for knowledge, awareness and wisdom, which could be found via a simple Google search. The two fields, Atu and Kanukum, translate to gatekeeper and seal, meaning that it was fairly obvious what needed to be done. The gatekeeper was a cipher, whilst the seal was a code block. They simply needed to read the most recent email from beyond yesterday, solve a one-line riddle and insert it into the program. The first riddle read, Long was the rule of Alalgar, diminished by the luminosity of the third Edimu in the heavens. Whilst this doesn't sound like the easiest to solve in the world, those seekers were on another level. Alalgar, a mythological king of Sumer, was said to have ruled for 36,000 years. The third Edimu in the heavens, Edimu meaning demon, was once again the star Algol, also known as the Demon Star. Except, as I've mentioned, it's not just a singular star, it's actually a three-star system, the third of which, Algol AB, has a luminosity of 10 solar units. 36,000 minus 10 is 35,990. Elementary, really. Sadly though, this was another dead end for any overarching secret, as when deciphered, all they learned was that Garrett was being convinced to turn his forces against the elephant in the hopes of taking down Crime Net, foreshadowing the narrative behind breaking feds. One month later, there was yet another development, a second cipher to solve, this time supposedly courtesy of Garrett himself. The riddle read, time is something we never have enough of, but looking at the smallest unit can make it seem infinitely long, and subtracting the number of rights I have sworn to protect makes little difference. Not quite as cryptic as had been seen in the past, this one was solved almost immediately. The answer was 9,192,631,760. The precise scientific definition of a second in terms of the transition frequency of a KCM-133 atom, minus 10, the number of ratified articles in the Bill of Rights. When decoded, this message was simply a confirmation that Garrett was willing to go ahead with the sting operation on the elephant. At this point, the image on the seal also changed, being the first time we see the Heil Triangle used alongside the name Kataru, meaning Alliance. This name was seen once again in their next email. This was by far the most challenging solve, with puzzles inside puzzles. The first read, seen through the eye that is no longer there, a mirrored image creates and results in how many unique individuals? A comparatively simple logic puzzle, with the simple answer zero. This uncovered another clue. I am Apate, in ancient Sumer, he was my nemesis and the light. The answer here was Utu, the Sumerian god of light, juxtaposing the previously mentioned Apate, a god related to Nyx and the darkness. Riddle 3 read, I am the traveller farthest from home, but the time of my departure was not of sadness. An incredibly vague clue towards Voyager 1, the furthest known man-made object from Earth. 
To make things even harder for the seekers here, the answer was numeric, being 1977, the actual time or year of its departure. Next was I have met many gods in my life and relayed many greetings from home. This one stumped the Seekers for a while, but eventually they realised that the clue was still referring to the Voyager, which on its mission made three flybys of planets and moons named after gods, Jupiter, Saturn and Titan. The probe famously also carried a golden record containing greetings in 55 different languages should it ever be found by intelligent life. And usually, here they had to multiply the two solutions together, coming to the correct answer of 165. The gods have many followers, one of which dwarfs a god I have never encountered, whose name I have forgotten, was a clue to the next decryption. The gods' followers in this case were the moons, and it's well known that Ganymede is larger than the planet Mercury, making this the next cipher solution. Unlocking, I was a wild man of clay and water, she was my doom. Anyone up on their smite lore will know the man of clay and water to be Gilgamesh's friend Enkidu, and the goddess who was his doom to be Ishtar, the next and final key. Once again, the Seekers had been led to a dead end. All they received in the final message was confirmation that this Kataru was the name of their true enemy. To rub salt into the wound, around this stage in the timeline, Wordsmith started to actively involve himself in the ARG via avatar images on his Steam profile. More than anything, these were designed to drum up further intrigue and add to the lore that was being built up. However, that didn't stop the Seekers from solving them. Starting as a Hyle Triangle, the images evolved as coded text was superimposed over ambiguous backgrounds. The first was entirely solvable with the Matudu cipher, reading, There were three, which once discovered, changed to, One is dead. In hindsight, this was referencing the Watches and Borwin, but damn, it must have been painfully confusing with the limited information the Seekers had been given at the time. These wordsmith clues would be revisited later. For now, though, there was an important period of narrative building with Operation Karamojo detailing the elephant being detained and the discovery of Bane's tape left for Jacket, clarifying some of the law points that have been alluded to in the FBI files so far. However, just one day before the release of Breaking Feds, scans of a document seized from the elephant were released publicly. The Lindenhurst pages were also heavily steeped in lore, mentioning that the kings were quarrelling and the watchers were gone over a century ago. It also stated that Baldwin's lament had to be protected, the first reference to Baldwin in many years of the secret's progression. None of this directly impacted the secret, however, the symbol at the bottom of the page, this Hyle Triangle, did draw the Seeker's attention for quite some time. In hindsight, this was another bit of Dark Souls-esque storytelling that was easy to conflate into something larger. Although I don't want to dwell too long on it, as it wasn't directly pertinent to the secret, hours of time were still poured over it by the community. In essence, Robert Flood's Hyle Triangle is a visualisation of the conceptual relationship between three realms of Renaissance cosmology, the physical, the celestial and the afterlife. These matched with the trinities that were already known to us of the kings, the watches and then later the coffers. Whilst the inverted triangle does represent the totality of God in its original depiction, I don't think it was ever Wordsmith's intention to make this story about Christianity's interpretation of God. More so, he wanted to use symbology across many different historic belief systems to represent how ancient and universal the Kataru truly were. In other words, this is basically just a coat of arms for the Kataru, and if anything was foreshadowing the finer details of the secret, but certainly wasn't essential information to be deciphered. What was essential was the confirmation that we'd be going after the coffers and their shared symbology. From Breaking Feds onwards, the Secret Seekers were already fairly confident that the gang would be looking to acquire the three coffers of the Kings, and whatever was inside would be part of the key to the secret itself. It's at this point the Seekers finally get the recognition they deserved, with the addition of an in-universe representation of their work, Skeptic Guy 96. The Secret is Really Real.com was Overkill's first direct reference to the Secret in many years, and was the beginning of its escalation. Fortunately, this character insert was doing a lot of work for them. Whilst also functioning to tease new content updates, he gained access to camera feeds in the Bureau, took pictures within the Payday Gang's safe house, and eventually revealed the location of the next heist in the story, Henry's Rock, before being unceremoniously put down by the Kataru. In the meantime, Garrett had received yet another coded email to be deciphered within the Madutu program. The clue was simply, have a pleasant anniversary, Mr. Garrett, one that we can also discover during the Break and Feds heist to be the 12th of the 12th, 1212. This one was little more than a threat by the Kataru, once again taking the Seekers no closer to the truth. But upon the release of Henry's Rock three days later, one theory would be confirmed. The secret did involve the recapture of all three of the King's coffers. 
This heist had also been foreshadowed by Wordsmith, once again through cryptic avatar images citing the Epic of Gilgamesh and the four original mass, which could later be found in the heist and provided the foundation for some massive lore theories. It's worth remembering though that not every detail was relevant to the overarching secret itself. The world building was equally important from Wordsmith's perspective, hence the appearance of the Nephilim and further use of the Hyle Triangle within Henry's Rock. This triangle better explained the existence of the Three Kings, the King Doctor, King Elephant and King Scribe. So at this point, the Seekers were beginning to unravel the true identities of the Kings as other hints were left to their true nature. However, that's better saved for a future lore theory as this still wasn't truly pertinent to the secret itself. Just know that I'm pretty sure they're meant to be aliens from the Three Star System of Algol. Unfortunately, there was little that could be done with the coffers themselves, and although we now knew that Jiro's son Kento and the entirety of Murky Water were on the side of the Kataru, the community would need to wait even longer before they could open up the boxes and make use of their contents. By the time the Icebreaker event rolled around, the Seekers were far too well versed in puzzle solving to be held back for long. Whilst there were a few solves made here, coming from references to Watchers and Nephilim yet again, this ended up simply being promotional material for the upcoming Shacklethorne auction heist, adding fairly little to the secret search as it wasn't performed in-universe. However, this disappointment wouldn't last for long, as on day one of the event, a trophy update added access to the three coffers and the medallion stolen from Brooklyn Bank. This was the key to opening the boxes, revealing a dark metal orb and several rings that appeared to be similar to planetary ring systems. The diamond box belonging to the Scribe King, later assumed to be Vlad, was found empty with a hollow hexagonal shape missing from within. This was of course the obsidian plate, which would be the target of our next heist. But before that, the real sleuthing took place. These rings, as well as an astrolabe featured on the Icebreaker website, had characters of a fictional written language inscribed upon them. Whilst they couldn't be translated by the usual means, they could be brute force, as it appeared that the language was written with the same word and sentence structures as English, simply mirrored. Substitution deciphering could therefore be used to discover the only possible character a Katari symbol represented. To explain this better, look at this three letter word. Within the context of any sentence, it simply has to be the word the to make any sense, meaning the seekers immediately knew how to write T, H and E in this made up language. Those high frequency letters could then be inserted to help narrow down the others in the sentence. The first sentence read, where the four stand, portals will open, then see how the world comes to an end. Cryptic, but not immediately secret relevant. They also discovered that by interacting with Scarface's piano, these objects would resonate and vibrate, with an email to Garrett coming through to confirm that something else out there was also responding to the music. This brings us on to probably the most secret filled heist in the game, Shacklethorn Auction. It did a lot to further the narrative of the secret, and we lore enthusiasts should be grateful for the work undertaken by the Seekers, discovering the likes of the Nephilim silhouette, piecing together the White House painting and Ben Franklin dentist connection, as well as the August Lindenhurst expedition. But in reality, it was the work done after recovering the plate that truly impressed me. By once again playing the piano in Scarface's room, another series of symbols and images could be seen. The first read, if needs must, for those who are called, to remake your legacy from within likely alluding to what Baldwin's Lament was all about with its rebirthing property. Next were the temples, the Pyramid of the Sun, the Dreaming Temple, the Great Pyramid of Cheops and the Great Ziggurat, all displayed with their global coordinates. These were the four locations referred to previously that housed portals which could apparently end the world. Importantly, only three of these actually exist in reality, representing cultures that had already played a part in the secret, Mesoamerican, Egyptian and Sumerian. By using their known geographical coordinates, the fourth location could also be discovered, found in the middle of the South Pacific at a point known by Lovecraft fans to be where the sunken city of Arlie lies, home to Cthulhu, bringing yet another pantheon of gods into the picture. Speaking of those gods, depicted on the obsidian plate were also the Sumerian Tiamat and Marduk, alongside Quetzalcoatl and Tetzcatlipoca from Aztec tradition. These figures are well known for their involvement in creation and rebirth myths within their pantheons. Alongside them were depictions of Bastet and Anubis, Egyptian gods more so related to the afterlife, however we'd learn why these deities were important to the Kitaru mythos soon enough. Once again, I don't want to bang on about lore here, but I'm fairly certain that the purpose of this part of the tablet was to solidify the idea that the history of the human race had been intertwined with the Kitaru kings and Nephilim for many years, and these are the stories humans tell to attempt to rationalise the alien power of these beings, hence the existence of a more modern godly representation of Lovecraft's eldritch beings. 
The Seekers also got another look at these Nephilim via the tablet, confirming their involvement in the secret, as well as their likely origins from a distant solar system pointing towards the frequently repeated Algol. More important than any of this though, when it came to the actual secret itself, the Seekers were given the coordinates to a location known as the Ark of the Watcher. It was the White House, massively foreshadowing the final heist of Payday 2's main campaign. For now though, it was another brief wait until the final chapter where the most sleuthing would be required, the breaking news event. This started with another internal email to Garrett. Not a puzzle this time, but something to set the scene and scale of it all. Essentially, the president had been compromised and the dentist Kataru were running the show on a national level. Oh, and again, they implicated Vlad the Baker as an enemy of the Kataru, virtually confirming to be the scribe king. For the sake of the secret, his allegiance to the Payday Gang was necessary, as it turned out he was holding onto the diamond taken all the way back in 2014. By leaving it in the safe house, another key to the puzzle had emerged. But first, Hell's Island would have to play out. At this point, most of the story beats were out in the open. The Kataru were run by the dentist with Kento as his top lieutenant. They'd abducted Bane back in 2017 due to his ties to the elephant and the search for Baldwin's lament. Bane was injected with a serum, later found to be the same substance extracted from No Mercy many years ago, which had given him immense strength, but was now killing him rapidly. Bane killed Kento with the strength he'd been given, the crew escaped after a successful rescue, setting the scene for one final heist to solve the secret. Narratively, it seemed as though the dentist was moving proactively, opening up the temples and therefore creating a window of opportunity to access the Ark of the Watcher under the White House and complete the secret. But the work of the Seekers wasn't yet done, even as the White House heist released. Scarface's piano still held the key, and as painstakingly discovered by Random Kenny and his group, this one wouldn't be easy, spending over 11 hours in one stream to find a solution. Supposedly, as it was an in-game event, the answer to the piano puzzle was data mined in advance, but those doing it legitimately made use of a clue from Duke. After the update, he now referenced his mother playing him the oldest song. This was found to be the Hurian Hymn, the oldest known song inscribed in cuneiform and dating back to 1400 BCE. Whilst many of Wordsmith's recent clues had been about world building and narrative, explaining the nature of the lament and teasing at Vlad's origins, at this point he did step in to share a Kataru coded Dallas mask, which gave the Seekers an indication of which part of the song would be required to solve the puzzle. After a simple nine note combination, the device consisting of the obsidian plate, rings and orbs ceased their rotation, opening up the most gameplay intensive section of the secret. Now, by interacting with the device, more Kataroese could be read and translated. In total, there were 57 potential sentences shown to any player, and a combination of 20 of these would have to be understood and their statements fulfilled. Heisters these days have the luxury of modded translators, but back then this was yet another hurdle to leap, having to translate and solve a cryptic challenge in order to prove that they were worthy of the secret. It didn't take long for the community to realise that these phrases aligned with different achievements within Payday 2 though. For instance, from a well-guarded transport, the four thieves found out about a secret shipment containing a valuable weapon could only be about finding the train heist documents on any armoured transport heist. The but wait there's more achievement. Running you through every decoded translation would take up half this video's runtime again, but just know that whilst it was a time-consuming section of the solve, it was comparatively easy relative to what was to come. With every out of high step completed at this point, all that was left was to hit the White House, accompanied by a team of equally worthy seekers. Here they had to fight their way down to the Peoc, where a painting of Mictlan Takutli, Aztec God of the Dead, covered the true entrance to the Ark of the Watcher, this strange celestial array seen all the way back during the Diamond. By blasting into the tunnels below the White House, the final part of the secret was finally discovered. A great wheel of Kataroese text, surrounded by a set of four levers. Upon pulling the activating switch, the top layer of text transformed itself into yet another cryptic riddle. The only external clue being that each answer had to be a five letter word to fit in the available space. I'm sure most of you are familiar with how this works by now, spend ages being chased down by repurposed cloakers known as Arc Guardians while scrambling to pull the correct lever to rotate the answer into place. But the Seekers actually had to solve these riddles for themselves as well as handle the clunky mechanics. Only four riddles needed to be answered correctly per run, but there were 13 that could appear in total. By all accounts, this was a matter of pretty serious trial and error, community hive mind research and educated guesses. Let me run you through all the riddles and my best attempts to explain the reasoning behind the correct answers. The first one was, in the temple of gold and white, I bind myself to my psyche forever. The answer was Cupid, Roman god of love. In Roman myth, Cupid was married to Anima, often referred to by her Greek name, Psyche. 
The legacy of Alessandro Cagliostro calls to the Eastern Star. The answer to this was Guide, solved thanks to the in-game copy of the Guide of Bane. We already know that this was originally Cagliostro's guide, and by interacting with it whilst holding the diamond, referred to by Clover as the Eastern Star in its trailer video, every other word burnt away, leaving only Guide. I am the bearer of the greatest gifts, I will give you what you seek the most, is Giant, once again referring to the Nephilim. This one was answered by Duke in the safe house, stating, for those who are worthy, the Giants grant the greatest gift. I am trusted to guard the great wealth of the land, but do not trust my words. The answer here is Aparte, the previously referenced Greek god of deceit. The first half of the sentence refers to that name being found on the vault in Big Bank, finally solidifying its connection to the secret. Twins exchange a breath, the third sibling is banished until it returns, refers to Algol, the three-star system I've assumed the Nephilim originated from. The banishment part is likely in reference to the way in which the stars orbit each other. Upon the terrace of riches and wealth, I hold what all who behold me desire. I'm fairly certain this one was a trial and error solve, working through five letter words that might be desirable to hold, i.e. crown, money, and eventually the correct answer, jewel. Although by the sounds of it, I wonder if it was intended to allude to some statue found in game. I stand in front of the humble man on the wicked path as a companion. This is drawn entirely from the guide of Bane, I told you it would be back. The answer being sword, found protruding from the ground in front of the humble man, clearly considering a life of crime. In the sand-covered land of pharaohs, I am followed by the missing light. This immediately draws attention to Egypt, where the Sheut is a part of the soul represented by one's shadow. Of course, for a shadow to exist, there must be an incidence of missing or interrupted light. With my companion's wisdom and ferocity, I fly over that which is my land. This is likely referencing a Mesopotamian god, but I've been completely unable to work out which one it could be. Fortunately, the riddle is actually after the specific land, as opposed to the deity. From looking back at the discussion board, it seems like Suma was guessed by process of elimination. That of the Watcher, which will be consumed in the voice of Suma. Here we see that prophecies seem to be all the rage in these riddles, as it's actually referring to Bane. Bane's flesh is being consumed by the No Mercy Serum, which was actually told to us in a Katarui's update post released alongside the White House. When translated to the voice of Suma, also known as Phonetic Sumerian, flesh can be read as Zumru. At the gates of silent memory, the lizard gods speak thy number. This one always struck me as a little bit overcomplicated. In my opinion, it's being drawn from the description of the Elephant's Coffer Trophy. Here you'll find an incantation, which according to the Necronomicon, means Spirit of the Sky, remember? Spirit of the Earth, remember? I assume this is referring to the two Aztec gods from the Obsidian Tablet, Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca, who are often depicted as lizard or serpentine creatures. The trophy also references the Gates of Silent Memory, followed by the numbers 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, the sum of which equals 10, which when translated into the language of the lizard gods, i.e. Aztec, is read Lahun. I must face two to ascend lest I meet my final journey in this challenge, is a much more simple riddle, again drawing inspiration from the Guide of Bane. The challenge appears to be a game of chess, the five letter answer to this puzzle. We see a Grim Reaper figure as the opponent in this game, hence death being alluded to as the final journey, and two, I assume, being the two black pieces white is facing down. Among old recovered things, four couples are eternally locked in their love. The final riddle, the answer to which is dance. Honestly, I have no idea about this one, and it's almost impossible to discover how it was ever solved, as that information simply doesn't seem to exist online. Old recovered things include the coffers, medallion, and obsidian plate, but nothing about these images scream dance to me, so if you know how the Seekers got this one, let me know in the comments below. In any case, after answering all 13 riddles, the secret itself was very much so solved. Successful Seekers just need to land a shot between the dentist's eyes, feel the lament with Overdrill's Mayan Gold, and watch as the greatest heist of all took place in front of their eyes. Payday 2's second, and I believe definitive ending was unlocked to any player who was able to achieve all of this. I can only begin to imagine the satisfaction of those heisters who were the first to surmount one of the longest running and greatest ARGs of all time. Their dedication was rewarded by an homage plaque featuring 53 of the first and most influential secret hunters out there. And that is how the secret was solved. Strangely, it was only in the final six months that the secret really began to take shape within the game itself, but I really do want to highlight the earlier puzzles which helped to build up that rich narrative around the event and were just as instrumental in its overall impact on the game and its lore. Here's hoping Payday 3 will find a way to one-up the wonderful machinations of Wordsmith and the Overkill narrative team. I'll see you all very soon.
A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.